Hi all, I have another amazing game of Leela Chass, our favorite neural network on this channel. So this is in round 18, uh, TSEC season 13, division three. Let's have a look. So against Nemorino, D4, D5. So Leela playing white, knight F3, C6, this is the end of the book. We have the very solid looking bishop F4, bishop F5, C4. E6, Queen B3. Now B6. This is unusual from chess place live book perspective. Usually Queen B6 is played here. For example, this position is um, okay for both sides. But uh, yeah, this B6 it leaves uh, potentially the C file a little bit weak intuitively. Anyway, after Knight C3, Bishop D6, uh, White took on D6. And now went for this light square bishop with knight h4. Black took on c4, so we are getting uh, a c file pressure here potentially on c6. And what's worse, you know, b5 was played here. Structurally, it seems the Nimarino engine doesn't mind structural damage. Uh, perhaps bishop g6 could have been considered with the double pawns there instead of potentially double pawns on the f file. But this is a small edge for white. This position after g3 that's a nice target convenient target on c6 so uh b5 though is played and we have knight takes f5 inserted here hitting the queen instead of moving the queen so if takes then there's knight takes d6 check with a big advantage <laughs> piece up so uh that's taken queen d3 hitting the pawn that's protected a3 discouraging b4 knight d7 we have here g3, black castles, bishop g2, a5, very aggressive, but is it doing anything? White castles, rook fd8, rook fd1, rook ab8, e3, strengthening d4, a4. It seems as though black's intent on having fixed pawns on light squares. Rook ac1, knight b6. So knight c4 might be the thing that black was banking on but we have a fantastic retreat move knight b1 here which in some ways takes the sting out of knight c4 here if knight c4 this wasn't played uh queen f6 was played as we quick look knight c4 uh the rook can protect and say a tactical knight e5 say this teasing and then knight d2 evicts the knight and white gets on with things with the c file pressure after so it's no big deal putting a knight into c4 here so queen f6 was played instead knight d2 protecting c4 anyway g5 again black is really i don't know an addict to having fixed pawns on light squares and seems to want to do this on the other side of the board now so g4 the pawns are getting fixed on light squares here and on the queen side uh so what is nemorino doing structurally in terms of the pawn structure h4 is played now g takes would further fragment black's pawns it looks just horrible and maybe king g2 later rook h1 so that pawn is left queen e6 queen d3 rook bc8 queen b1 king g7 b3 which is uh an interesting prelude now to fixing down the c6 pawn after b4 because this wasn't taken on Poisson. It would be a nice outpost square, outpost on, on c5. Uh, maybe white can even invite the exchange of queens first. So that was left. So, But this pawn is now really fixed. And so is f5. It seems black's pawns are getting frozen. Queen b2, queen f6. Some su shuffling here. It looks as though white's just conveniently building up pressure on the c6 pawn. For a bit and teasing a little bit 97 we have knight b1 now bit of news the knight reroutes so is there a possibility later of e4 or something or d5 at the moment both are not very lucrative and it seems here okay after knight e5 there's a bit of simplification knight takes rook c5 so black's really got a fixed pawn structure i thought during the stream a sitting duck so to speak structurally can white just build up pressure on c6 uh, but it looks as though after this shuffling here that 
leader's not convinced of anything just yet. But here the move h5 is played, and although in the immediate short run e4 is out of the question because of d4, this does mean e4 later is more effective because the rook strikes at h5. So that was an interesting committal decision, h5, basically making e4 more effective later. And it seems, yeah, really, black has an addiction in this game to putting pawns on light squares for some reason. <laughs> uh, queen f6, you know, it's still, there's pressure on d4 here, discouraging e4. So this move is very interesting and suspect, but uh, yeah, it's it's very difficult to calculate these things. Maybe within the range of calculation, this looks safe enough, but pawns do not go backwards. That's a, a really big fact, which traditional chess engines just don't understand. Pawns will never be able to go backwards. Uh, so it means that e4 at some point in the future, outside of the current horizon of the Merino, e4 is, e4 is going to be more effective. We have rook dc1. Yeah, because e4 here, let's just test it here. It's safe enough for black, this position. Uh, in fact, black, yeah, it's it's black has a small edge there. So white just probes now, rook dc1. Now f6 as well <laughs> is another kind of weakening move. Pawns just don't go backwards. Black's really using up all of its pawn moves, actually, getting pawns fixed now, uh, stuck, so to speak. Okay, so queen b1 here. And it looks as though, because black's got pressure on d4, it looks as though any break is out of the question in this shuffling phase. It looks as though, yeah, Leela's not doing too much. Uh, and I'm especially, I was especially concerned because of the time manager configuration change, which seems to give Leela the draw death in this tournament. And I thought, is this just going to be another draw here? Or should we hold out for some hope that something is going to happen? Uh, now here on bishop h1, if we test out d5 just to test the waters here, knight takes d5 doesn't do anything. This line just doesn't do anything. In fact, you know, king g2 check is dangerous for getting mated. This is dangerous for any checkmate. So this is not really an ideal continuation at all for white. Uh, if this is equal dynamically fine, but it's not exactly a good advert for the d5 break. So bishop h1, and we have another period of what seems to be really aimless shuffling. Uh, but black's pawns are definitely fixed. So this means it's an ideal recipe position for really timing a pawn break effectively when at the most embarrassing moments, most painful, embarrassing moments for black to consider one of the pawn breaks. There was some speculation in chat about f3. But I, I felt it weight weakened like e3 and g3 too much. And actually Lila doesn't is not tempted by a move like f3. We come up to this crunch position round about here, where actually the black king, believe it or not, in fact gets a little bit adventurous here with the move king g6. So this does hold against possibilities of e4 the h5 pawn, but the king's out and about, surely. And it's here, I think this was actually at a kind of time pressure of Nemorino. And to be fair, Nemorino seems to be without a table base as well. The table base is not just when a table base position is reached. A lot of the strongest engines seem to be making thousands of table base hits even before any endgame is reached, just as a point of reference for future endgames, assessing them very quickly. So Nemorino is more likely, basically, to blunder in time pressure without a table base support uh, infrastructure. And here, this does seem a little bit dangerous now. Uh, whatever way was played, if the king went to f7, it seems e4 is dangerous here. For example, f takes this position uh, with, you know, with h5 attacked. Uh, if here, then this position is, is nice for white. And also here, if, um, you know, rook takes h5, this position is also nice. So already it seems as though white was in a strong position at this point, even if king f7, there was, uh, you know, a pawn break available with e4. But king g6, we have actually a different move. 
the D5 pawn break is made use of here. Now clearly uh, CD just loses a piece, rook takes C8. So black plays uh, knight takes D5. And the idea is E4, really embarrassing the king actually. This is what I mean about pawn breaks, the most painful, most embarrassing point possible. E4, this is really a little bit embarrassing for black. Black played knight E7. It's this position, if takes check, uh, the queen's ready to strike on G5 as well. The queen's not accidentally placed, it seems, for just C6 pressure. But also there's a possibility of queen G5 jack lurking around. So this variation, uh, black just retreats the bishop. This is a really powerful move to threaten rook takes b8 without rook e8. And um, black's in big problems here. For example, here, rook takes b5. This is really nice for white. Uh, if we tried, if we tried rook takes b5 here, just to put that on the board, rook e8, and that's a pain actually. Here, this is just a pain. It's an even position. Um, yeah, even if white wins the queen, I think the two rooks against the queen, good enough there. So uh, actually, um, yeah, knight e7 is played. And now rook e2. So this has become a nice kind of deeper pawn sacrifice with the king on g6. And Lila probably doesn't count this as an extra pawn anyway, This these double pawns here. So what's going on here? Rook f1. Rook e1 is played. Yeah, not rushing things. E takes f5. This position, say king g7, rook e6, is actually, this is okay for white as well. But rook e1 is played. Patience. And now, not even e takes f, but e5. This is really a turn up for the books. Undoubling black's pawns. But the bishop is better than the knight in a lot of variations. F takes, rook c takes, e5 hitting the knight. And now rook c5. Black is protecting c6 rather awkwardly. Queen g5 hitting h5. King g7, rook c e5. Threatening rook e7 check, winning the queen. Parrying. And here's some patience. So a pawn down, but really uh, things have opened up. H5 is about to drop off as well, potentially. But black plays queen d8, uh, setting a trap, actually, I believe, because here, I think there's rook h, not rook h8. It looks as though the, the queen might be awkward there anyway. It doesn't seem... Uh, that That's interesting to consider, this position, but I don't think it's in white's favour. Yeah. Uh, the queen seems a bit hemmed in there. So actually Leela just exchanged off queens and took took on c6. This is much simpler. This just this clarification is much simpler. Because now b5 and a4 potentially are weak. So getting a pawn back. Equal on pawns. But the bishop against knight, the bishop seems a bit stronger in this position because of all these pawns on knight squares. This is something very difficult to calculate in advance. You know, these these fixed pawns on knight squares might be, you know cannon fodder for, for the bishop basically later. Uh, so f4 here is played, g takes, bishop takes, and another target on, on here, on, on, the, on the king side. f4, that's taken here, uh, rook d8, rook g2, we have rook d6 here. I think it's pointless to play f3 because rook f2, uh, this position hitting the knight, uh, this is very pleasant for white here. For example, like this, where b5 is dropping. We've got two pass pawns over here. Big advantage for white. So, okay, rook d6 was played, not f3. Black finally was not tempted to put another pawn on a light square. The addiction <laughs> has gone away by this stage. So rook e4, uh, king h6. Now simplification, bishop takes. And this rook and pawn ending is actually very, very favorable for white. White wants to, uh, doesn't mind another pair of rooks coming off. So this happens. This king and pawn ending is really nice. The king can come over here. Check, uh, king e6. So without table base support as well, 
uh, we were actually getting positive that Lila could actually win this game at this point. <laughs> it became evident Lila has done a great deal to try and win this game. Rook g6 now. So the rook on the g files kept the king uh, hemmed in on this side of the board. And now rook b6. So not minding swapping a3 for b5. So rook d3. King takes. Rook takes a3 just in time protecting this pawn. But the king's so far away now. The game actually ended here in Leela's favour by adjudication. Uh, so it needs 8 ply or full full moves where it's plus 6.5. And here it was. So rook a6 for example let's let's do a fictional game continuation the king is just too far over there the, the pawn just pushes basically and queens basically simple as that pawn's about to queen the king's not really helping that is over here so i would say a rather shocking win because i had expected Lila actually to draw like most of the, the remaining games so i'm very very happy of course i think it might be too little too late uh, unfortunately for promotion this time round, I'm really hoping that in two to three months time uh, Lila could start from division three uh, I don't think there's any chance of being relegated at the moment so starting from division three next time but I think just as important as the neural network weights is the actual configuration in terms of the time manager because I believe actually for neural networks one of their great powers is depth basically you know end-to-end -end, uh, pattern analysis and if they can can say choose you know the best possible end game early on in the opening I mean even humans do that sometimes in Sicilian even in Sicilians you know to see that you've got a three to two poor majority you might think okay the end game's going to be good but can you imagine what Leela can do from typical middle game positions she could select out of like 200 different end games one end game in particular where there might be two connected past pawns but this requires a good time manager for Leela to really pu be pushed hard to install a concrete advantage in the opening which for Leela's case will often be a good assessment of an end game with say past pawn potential in my view we've seen that game pattern very frequently where connected past pawn seems to be one of Leela's really killer trump cards against traditional engines and unfortunately to me it seems that killer trump card hasn't been so evident in this division but I am very happy with this win but I really think the Leela team really needs to focus on perfecting the time manager however the network will also be incredibly stronger next time around anyway so these are very very exciting times and thankfully this TSEC is not every year it's just when this one ends the next one starts so it's a really superb uh, tournament format continually uh, happening really fun to be part of and really nice to see Alila win here and I was a bit surprised because Alila had been suffering a draw death in, in many many games I think it's a little bit late for promotion but m maybe some miracles can happen in the closing rounds for Lila to, to promote but it seems the Deus Ex engine uh, is is the favorite powered by Lila it's the favorite at the moment to promote uh, as the second spot to Ethereal e e Ethereal pardon me Ethereal uh, so that's my bet at the moment but uh, maybe things can change rapidly you never know. Comments, questions, like, shares, appreciate it. Thanks so much.